I was looking at your uh, your Instagram story, and I did see you're on the PS5 grind with playing with your daughter. What, what are you a gamer? What games do you play? Man, look. If you know anything about having kids, and if you know anything about the the new the new new is coming out, <laughs> look, bro, trying to get that PS5 and three kids, trying to get three of them. Come on, man, act of Congress, bro, act of Congress. <laughs> so, look, my my video game days was Atari. The first, the first, the cloop, cloop. Yeah. I literally watched my daughter turn this game on, and I said, I, there's no, I don't even know how, what are you, I have no, <laughs> so she's going to show it to me, but it was all about for her, man. You know, we've had a, had a tough year this year, and so that PS5, man, you know, mm-hmm. really warmed her heart. Shout out to my boy, R.D., the plug love that man hey we all listen i I camped out for once so i know how that it's not easy to get your hands on one hey so so let's uh let's talk about soul because i I watched the movie just yesterday and i mean i i loved it i thought it was thought it was inspiring it was emotional it was really really well character driven uh and your your character of joe he's he's so he's a mentor for so many people and people who specifically who want to be creative people and i'm curious because you are, have are, have pursued so many creative talents and you've become, I mean, just just so incredibly talented in so many different avenues. Did Thank you have a person in your life who even when you doubted yourself would always pick you up and say, listen, pursue what you want to do. Follow that spark like they do oh, in Seoul. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, my grandmother right off the bat, Estelle Talley, Mark Talley, taught, they taught me classical piano. And I eventually went on and, and uh, did classical piano in college. My best friend, Gilbert, Who's, who's my best friend now, you know, all these years. And I would say, hey, man, man, uh, attack it like you attack Terrell Tigers, like, you know, when we was back in the football field. And uh, so always having people in my corner, my daughter, both my daughters. So it's always people in my corner. I've been very, very fortunate to have people like that. Steve Harden, the guy who taught me how to sing, say, hey, man, get out there and do that, you know, do your thing. So it's like it's a, um, it's a blessing to be able to have those types of people in your life. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I'm glad you pursued those things because it's been fun to follow your career, man. And also, I mean, speaking of following your career, you are now the first black actor to play the lead role in a Pixar film. And this film, I mean, it, it goes, it also incorporates some really cool elements of black culture, I think, that we haven't seen in a movie like this before. Like, what does that mean to you? And, and did you get to have creative input on those sorts of things? Well, first of all, to be the first African American lead in a Pixar film is absolutely amazing, especially at this time. Like, I accept it in such a great way, man. We've gone through so much uh, this year. So I think this is the moment that we needed to, to smile. This is the moment where we needed to, to uh, really be proud of something. So I cannot wait for people to see it. And also, too, let me say it like this. Maybe you don't care about as much as the, the first black person in, in the movie. But guess what? It's 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. So boom. So there you go. If you're a cinephile, you just want to make sure the movie's good, right? Because I always say this, it ain't good enough just to be black. You got to be great. And so I think they've done a fantastic job, um, fantastic job uh, at, at Pixar, Disney, Pete, and, 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 and uh, Kemp. So it's just been amazing. So I can't wait for people to see it, man, and really enjoy yeah. it and be able to hang our hat on something beautiful for 2020 because that's what we need. Yeah, yeah, I love that, man. And my last thing for you, listen, we're comicbook.com. You're no stranger to comic book movies. Uh, And I know you can't say much about what may or may not be happening, but I know you know the rumors are out there. Did you ever think that there would ever be even a slight possibility of you reprising a role from a Spider-Man movie as Elektra, whether it happens or not? Did you ever think that was something that could be possible? I I don't know, but anything's possible. (laughs) <laughs> I love that, man. Well, I can't wait to see it's for everybody to see Soul and see what's next for you, man. Thank you so much Thank you. for taking the time, and I hope to get to talk to you again soon. So in Soul, you play this stubborn, cynical, unborn soul, 22, that Joe ends up being a mentor for, and the character is such a delight in so many different ways. What makes 22, in your opinion, so appealing and interesting? Well, I think she is too smart for her own good. And I think all of her kind of grouchy, sarcastic, sarcasticness, sarcasm is the English word, um, all of her grouchy sarcasm comes from being afraid, which is something I think a lot of us can identify with. 
She's afraid. Uh, she's scared to live. She's scared to go to Earth. She's worried that it's painful and stinky and scary. And um, and I think uh, we can all relate to that. And that that when she does get to go to Earth, I think that she is open to new experiences. Once she finally puts her toe in the water, she's overwhelmed with um, how great pizza is and how beautiful trees are. And uh, um, I agree with her on both of those things. Um, but given that everything, you know, you said it's very identifiable, you know, there's fear and there's this, the unknown, but she's also never experiencing these things. And, you know, we as human beings have had the luxury of already having the life um, how did you approach giving voice to a character who's never experienced any of these things? That's a good question. Um, yes, you try to have to, you have to kind of imagine tasting pizza for the first time, seeing New York City for the first time. Um, I think there's a great shot in the film when they uh, first come out of this hospital door and 22 is seeing basically what, like 23rd and 7th, uh, you know, like the busiest uh, it, mm -hmm. it, it's so overwhelming and it seems so accurate, like the portrayal of what it's like to step out into New York City for the first time. So uh, I think the visuals really are a, uh, were a great guide to help me imagine what that would all be like. You know, I think all great, a lot of great stories come from um, a, a fish out of water, a person, you know, it's new, new gal in town. And this is just an epic version of that. Um, one of the things that I really took away from Soul is that there are a lot of life lessons viewers can kind of get from that, from the experience of 22 being new and getting to experience life for all of its magnitude, to also the understanding of like what really drives us to want to live. Um, what is one thing that you took away from making the film and did the experience change your life in any way? As the film asks a lot of big questions of, you know, what is your purpose in life? What makes you you? Um, and it goes one step beyond that, which it also talks about even people with an all-consuming passion, at what point is that too much? You know, mm -hmm. I think uh, as Americans, especially, we're very driven and achievement-oriented and attainment-oriented. And, and there's really kind of a, a call for stillness and just being present in, in kind of a, I, I, I think, a Buddhist way. I'm not sure that... Um, was something I took away from the film as an important thing to remember. Now, a lot of my readers are going to know you, not just from your body, larger body of work, um, but also from Black Panther, which was such a groundbreaking film. And now Soul is also breaking ground as being the first Pixar film to have a Black lead and be Black and Brown centric. What does it mean for you to get to be a part of such an overdue, but also groundbreaking moment in entertainment? Uh, it, it, uh, it, it means the world to me. And it's quite you know, it, uh, you know, quite humbling, you know, to come through in a time where, you know, you're raising children. And so you're this whole keep it moving forward, keep, you know, keep striving. And yet there's there's ground that, you know, that we have to retread, that we're we're just trying to move forward. And so here are these first, you know, and, and, and they, you know, they may think everything is everything. And it's like, no, we still have good trouble to get into, as John Lewis would say, and good work Absolutely. to do. And this, just in terms of what I do, is part of, you know, can be a part of that good work. I'm really humbled and proud. Um, in Soul, you are the voice of the legendary jazz character, Dorothea, who is so commanding and so cool. But she's also really important to Joe's journey and is so connected to that amazing music that's part of the film. What most interests you about this film and that role? You know, I remember going to, you know, jazz clubs here in, in L.A. and in New York and seeing women who were ahead of their, ahead of their own combo, be it Dorothy Donakin, I mean, amazing on the piano, or seeing Betty Carter work those youngins. She always had, like, young guys in her band, and she would take them to task right there, you know? You know, right, I mean, just, like, drive them, drive them, drive them to perfection right there. And, and that could be part of the show, but it was a part of her ethic, you know? And uh, so I was just uh, remembering that and, and, and so impressed by that to meet these incredible, dynamic, accomplished accomplished women who were doing it at a time and a place where it was difficult, <laughs> you know, but they did it in spite of it. And, you know, that's, 
that's life, you know, that's the journey of life in spite of, difficult in spite of. How does it feel to have this film, Soul, be released in such unprecedented and difficult circumstances and at a time when there's really not a lot of family films out this year and you get to be a part of kind of that gift that we all really need right now? Yes, well, it feels good to be a part of that. And truthfully, I can say most of my career has been like that. Being really? That's cool. something that everybody could watch and enjoy. And speaking of your career, you played one of the most iconic TV moms with as Claire Huxtable. And in Soul, you play another really kind of iconic mom figure as, you know, Libba Gardner. And in a lot of ways, she kind of reminded me a little bit of Claire Huxtable with that stern but loving, you know, way of approaching her son. What was your approach to the character of Libba? Well, I understood. I understood her. I understood her very clearly as a mother who loves her son more than anything, who wants to see him stable and successful in life, and uh, thinking that she knows exactly what that is and how that's supposed to be, but having to come to terms with the fact that maybe there's something she missed. Um, one of the things I think is absolutely fantastic about Soul is that it is one, It is the first Pixar movie to have a black and brown lead. Like this is, this is huge and this is amazing. What has it been like for you to be part of this monumental moment for this animated film? I didn't think of it like that. I thought of it like I think of all my work in terms of what it means for people you know, mm. what it says about humanity, what it says about the way we think and the way we live and the way we move and the way we love and the things we understand and the things we don't understand, what we can hold on to, what we need to let go of. And speaking of the movie and like, you know, what we can understand and what we don't, Soul asks a lot of really big questions, mm -hmm. but it doesn't actually give you the answers. It gives you something to think about. And when you walk away from it, I know I did personally, it, it changed me a little bit. Was there anything about the making of Soul or anything that you learned or experienced in the process that you took away from the film or that changed you in any way? Oh, well, now let me think about that. Well, it certainly did um, explore things that have been of great interest to me for a number of years, I can say that. And uh, what it changed in me was, oh, hope for this industry that I work in, that this industry that I work in, that I'm a part of, would make such a film would make such an animated feature and put so much into it. I mean, the animation is, it, it's incredible. It's a period, it's the best. That the music in it is so new and different for animated feature. And film, particularly, sometimes you hear this quality of music in the background of things. Certainly in the Green Book, we heard great music. Yes, about Don Shirley, we heard that. But yeah, it, it uh, I became very, very hopeful for the entertainment industry. I know the last time we spoke, Soul was still slated to open in theaters and that has changed. Now it's gonna be Disney Plus on Christmas day. For you guys as filmmakers, how does it feel and what does it mean to you that this film is now going to be available for families as a bright spot during the holidays at home where maybe there aren't a lot of bright spots this year? I think for me, I've gone on this interesting journey since since the decision was made. I was like, ah, oh, we made this film for theaters. It was kind of a, a disappointment. But then recognizing, you know, I was sort of deluding myself somehow to think that when the film came out in theaters, that would mean the pandemic is over. But it's not <laughs> over. We're still in the middle of it. And I think this is the best way to make sure that people get to see it safely with their family and loved ones. So um, I'm, I'm I think it's a it's a it's a great thing. I mean, we make these movies to be seen, obviously. And, and look, it's uh, among the groups that are most negatively impacted by this pandemic is the group that I'm a part of. So it, it's a bit of a relief to not have to ask my family and relatives to quite literally put themselves in danger, a danger that I wouldn't subject my own kids to, to go see my work. <laughs> so I, I, 
in a, in a very unusual time, I think we kind of found ourselves in one of the best possible positions to get this out to may, maybe we'll in a, in a perfect world for a lot of young kids, maybe this is going to be their new Christmas tradition. If we're, if we're, you know, that'd like, be cool. Wow. I hadn't like, thought of that. That would be awesome. In a Christmas story and Ralphie. And that was like every year. <laughs> I love that idea. I love the idea of soul for Christmas every year. I will definitely yeah. try to make that a family tradition here. Cool. Um, absolutely. In the movie, like from the beginning, you know, there's this concept of what makes you, you, but as you watch the movie, you understand there's larger questions also being asked, especially the one about what makes life worth living, not just for 22, but also for Joe, someone who knows his purpose. It's something that's a little unexpected, but it's also really important. How did you guys approach this aspect of the story since it is a little bit of a deviation than what you might expect? I think it came directly from our own lives. And as Kemp has said before, we're kind of conditioned from little kids. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be? And, and somehow that that fulfillment of that is really what makes you happy. Uh, and, you know, for some people it is like I find a great joy in what, what I get to do. Um, but it's not the end all be all. There's more to life. And so this film really just gets to unpack that. And I think we're so used to and conditioned to the idea that just follow your dreams and that's the answer. Uh, and so we get to we get to kind of turn that on its head a little bit. Yeah, I love the idea of a family movie, a movie for kids and adults, where the end goal isn't simply realizing your dream. Mm. You know, like I love the fact that we could just of like turn the whole cliche on its head and have that not be the point of any of it. And it's, it's really, a, it's one of the boldest choices that, that I've seen in a long time. And, and to be perfectly honest, on certain days while we were doing this, I was say to Pete and Dana, like, are we really going to be able to do this? Like, are, <laughs> yeah. we gonna, are they going to let us get away with this? <laughs> and they did. <laughs> Luckily, Pete's the boss. Well, they is us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 